What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here back on the live stream here on this Friday, February 3rd, 2023. It's about 141 here along the West Coast in California. Latest quake shows a 4.6 on the Earthquake 3D globe over around the eastern Afghanistan area. That is going to be the latest earthquake showing up there across the area. Now, also, let me bring up my map here, or at least the seismograph stations, and watching some earthquake activity down into the Southern California area, swarming a little bit around this uh, Barrett station, as you can see up here. Barrett is a station uh, down in Southern Cal. Uh, so we're gonna go check out and see what's going on down there. It's picking up a lot of earthquake activity, and there is actually quite a bit of, um, at least ones that are being reported. I'm sure there's more according to this uh, live seismograph station here. We're getting quite a few earthquakes coming in, very small ones. Uh, but definitely a noticeable increase in activity across Southern California within the last hour. Uh, as you can see here on the map, some of these earthquakes being reported up and down the uh, portion here of the Southern California region, mostly around the Ontario Riverside area at the northern end of a couple different of these fault systems here. You got the Elsador fault that runs um, well from about Pomona South to the border. Uh, and then also the San Jacinto Fault Zone, and of course the uh, major plate boundary here, the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment, southern branch. And uh, things just kind of uh, looking like they're kicking up here today. So we'll continue to watch this uh, seismograph station for uh, any future um, well, potentially larger quakes in the area. Definitely seeing an uptick right now. Uh, one earthquake here uh, south of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone near the Johannesburg area. This one coming in uh, looks like about 7 o'clock this morning, a 2.4. little spotty activity throughout Ridgecrest, Long Valley Super Volcano. Uh, eastern portion here of the Sierra Nevada near Bridgeport, 3.1 uh, coming in yesterday. Around the Bay Area, just a couple of spotty earthquakes here along the Creeping Segment and also the Calaveras Fault Zone. No major earthquake activity to report there today. Um, movement around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, very typical. Uh, sometimes I don't even talk about this because this is an ongoing uh, swarm of activity um, basically induced by the hydrothermal operations that goes on down there with the uh, energy solutions around the uh, Clear Lake volcanic field. A little bit of movement here into the uh, Northern Cal area. Looks like around the Alder Springs in the coast range here, 2.1. And one earthquake here from yesterday down into the Cascadia subduction zone, about 20 kilometers deep here. For that uh, little 2.1. Pacific Northwest, um, aside from a couple small quakes around the Cascades and up here uh, north of, uh, what is this area here? Kashmir, Leavenworth, this whole area up here seeing a little bit of small, very small, I'm talking about microquake activity. Uh, inner, inner portion of the uh, North American plate here in the States. Showing some activity stretching across Nevada as well into Utah and up here around the Idaho-Washington border. A couple earthquakes coming in yesterday and today. Uh, Yellowstone National Park having a little bit of separate swarming by itself. Uh, look here at the map showing, uh, well, some earthquakes within the last couple hours. So on that note, let's go ahead and check out the uh, activity here on the Yellowstone overview map. And a little bit more activity, definitely noticeable here on the um, graph today, centered around the northwest corner of the Yellowstone Park around the Maple Creek area. Uh, some earthquakes yesterday overnight and uh, more so in the last couple hours as well. So things are uh, beginning to pick up slightly in terms of earthquake activity, um, multitudes of them. Uh, as far as a multitude of quakes go, but the magnitude staying fairly consistent and low grade. We've only seen, uh, looks like a 1. Point, yeah, 1.7, the largest here this morning. That's not a big quake, but we'll continue to watch that and monitor the activity for uh, any increasing swarming. One earthquake up here outside of Snyder, Texas, 3.0 coming in in the last hour. Also a handful of quakes over the last 24 hours, 3.5 um, a couple hours ago as well. Now, there's a, a couple different areas out here, um, oil fields in particular. Looking at the satellite view, uh, does show some of this earthquake activity 
around some um, wastewater disposal ponds. That's going to be these areas out here. Uh, specifically right around where this earthquake is. Um, there's some uh, pumping operations out here, it looks like. But directly underneath here, I'm not seeing it. But that doesn't mean that there's not um, some newer operations going on out there with that whole wastewater disposal process. Some activity down here in San Antonio, south of San Antonio as well, out into the oil and gas fields uh, galore. There's quite a bit of them out here, and that doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the, um, well, here on the map where they're all at. Little white checkered boxes and these little wastewater ponds and uh, disposal facilities out there. Quite a bit kicking up here into Texas today, uh, including outside of the uh, Pecos, Texas area. Got one south here along the uh, Toro gas field. Let me check out what's going on out here. Well, yeah, well, 2.3, 9 o'clock this morning. There's a whole bunch of these out here. Uh, all of these are oil pumping operations, fracking operations, wastewater disposal facilities. A lot of, uh, a lot of movement out there today. Got to remember that the continental stress is almost continuous in any, uh, any given area, and it could be away from the major plate boundary as well. Uh, but when you, uh, you know, start having these processes going on for years at a time, even some newer ones, you get these earthquakes popping up in those fields. Uh, one earthquake yesterday into the uh, Missouri area, looks like a 2.0 around the new Madrid so uh, fault zone. Uh, up into the Alaska area, things kicking up as well. Quite a few fours in the uh, Aleutian Trench here overnight. Three of them, to be exact. Some further activity up into the Cook Inlet region, stretching up towards Denali. Uh, of course, um, you know, this area is a major region for some large earthquake, or a large earthquake potential, I should say. A little bit of activity around Mac McCarth McCarthy, Alaska as well. So a couple, uh, definitely a couple noticeable increasing regions today. Um, the West Coast, North American Plate, and the northern end here of the Pacific Plate interaction with the North American Plate up here around Alaska. That's our hot spot of activity up here today. We've uh, lost the majority of the earthquake activity out here into the uh, uh, areas around uh, Vanuatu area and Indonesia. It uh, looks like we had two today, a 4.9 and a 5.1, bouncing back and forth here. But uh, overall, no major increasing activity uh, across this area right now. A glance at the EMSC model earthquake activity shows uh, some of this older movement quakes here um, on the globe. i got to adjust these colors a little bit uh, better. Uh, just got the latest updated earthquake 3D globe from uh, Richard, the developer here. So there's a, quite a few new options and whatnot. Uh, I'm gonna be messing with a few of them throughout the day today, getting the colors back to how they should be right now. Uh, at least on my end, this looks kind of browned and that's not normally how I want them to look. But uh, either way, it still gives us a good indicator of what's going on across the area. Down here in New Zealand, uh, GeoNet servers are going to be showing um, and yeah, pretty much about 2.0 and above, similar to what we would see along the west coast. Um, I may adjust that though because it's a little cluttered in the New Zealand area. Um, let's go ahead and check out the New Zealand region real quick with the GeoNet servers and see what we got. A lot of that activity is some older movement. Uh, there's a 2.2 North Island a couple hour, or an hour ago. Uh, checking out the all magnitudes map here. A deleted 2.7 event, uh, 3.1 it looks like an hour ago, 2.5, a couple twos out here, um, some of that deep as well, uh, it's 2.5, 132 kilometers deep, I know what's out there, the Hikarangi subduction zone at that depth, and some other smaller quakes, um, again well, I may adjust this just to about 2.5 and above uh, for the New Zealand area so we don't get cluttered. Not a big fan of clutterness uh, at all. But then again, it takes away some of the swarming areas uh, that we watch along California. You know, some of the twos 
and Hawaii as well. But uh, we'll we'll get to that here. I'll figure it out. Uh, far as it, because it, yeah, if you look on the globe, it looks like California is quiet, but it's not. A lot of microquakes popping off off out here along the west coast currently. Big island of Hawaii. A little bit of movement outside of uh, the Kilauea volcano, it looks like. Deeper activity today, 2.0 at 6 kilometers deep. And a uh, little spotty activity across Pahala today. Not very active. This area does come and go when it comes to the swarming area out here on the southeastern rift zone. But notice here, very quiet ac across the uh, western Pacific. So when it's like that, we're starting to see activity hit some of these oil fields out here, these weak areas in the crust now, that means that West Coast is uh, potentially could be on target for some earthquake activity. And we're already seeing that on these seismograph stations here. Uh, Barrett in Southern California showing uh, quite a bit of spiky activity. Um, again, I kind of want the microquakes out here. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Trimmer map from last night showed uh let's bring up the trimmer here cascadia 243 epicenters of trimmer into the cascadia subduction zone the southern end here uh, but more posi position a little bit further north uh, than what we had been seeing most of the activity had been confined in northern california now it's centered around the uh um outside the grants pass area but this is down below the surface into the subduction zone about 45 kilometers deep uh, that's still an obvious sign of strain uh, building up out there along the southern area of the Cascadia. All right, space weather activity. Things uh, relatively quiet and calm across the board. No major solar flares have been detected. And technically, there's really not a whole lot forecasted either. We did have a couple low-grade sea flares overnight. Nothing really to even discuss there. A glance at the magnetic structure of the uh, sunspot regions look uh they look somewhat uh well compared to last night this sunspot here we we're kind of watching it was growing it's still growing uh and i think it does have a chance to maybe produce uh, a little bit of flaring once it gets its act together uh but it, right now everything looks fairly stable across all the sunspot regions uh with a 75 percent chance for a c flare m flare at five Probably less than a 1% chance for X-Flare. No major proton events expected as these sunspots are just uh, very minimal currently. Not putting out a whole lot of uh, uh, flaring. The uh, coronal, not coronal hole, but uh, the aurora forecast here looks pretty bleak across the northern areas of the Earth. Not a whole lot of potential here in the coming days unless we get some major flaring. Yeah, or at least a major coronal hole, which is not likely. We've got a little bitty one here, 74. 75 is positioned way too far up north on the uh, northern segment of the sun. That's not going to be geo-effective whatsoever. And, of course, one way down south, but these are all uh, very minor and pointed away from the Earth. And that's that. Uh, let's see, weather activity today along the west coast. We picked up well, about three-tenths of an inch of rain here overnight into California. It has since dried out, and uh, our next storm system here along the west coast is knocking on the door. It looks like probably around uh, late Saturday, early Sunday morning time frame. Bringing some more rain and snow to the west coast. And uh, that's about as far as this model goes out there, about the first week of February. But uh, long-range models kind of still showing some further activity down the road. Uh, hinting at a wetter pattern there for northern California, which is good. Because we uh, we definitely need it. I don't want to call the uh, winter yet. I got a couple more months that I want to enjoy. All right, folks. Um, have a good day. Have a good Friday. I'll talk with you guys later tonight, unless something major comes in, and I I will be off on the side here while I'm doing a bunch of schoolwork, adjusting uh, some of these features out here. Again, there's a whole bunch of new options I can do here with the Earth Earthquake 3D globe. Uh, including the feeds. I can bring in a whole bunch of different uh, regions now to the globe, and I may just do that, but again, I don't want to clutter the globe to where we can't <clears throat> we really can't see what's going on, right? We want to know where the important earthquakes are. Uh, and also at the same time, though, it, it helps to know where these little earthquakes are taking place and if they're in a swarm fashion or not, you know, like similar down to New Zealand. But 
again it's so cluttered down there you really can't see where any of this activity is happening at uh, so I made you a little adjustment down there and we'll see how it goes but for now 4.5 Eastern Afghanistan we'll watch a couple areas today folks with the quietness going on across the Western Pacific uh, unless we see something major pop up here uh, we're looking at areas along the west coast here potentially getting hit uh, with that obvious stress movement into the areas around the oil and gas fields in the uh, interior portion of the North American plate. All right, guys, have a good Friday. We'll catch you a little bit later on this evening. Take care.